it's Robbie from Southern California, and yes, this is the mid-May garden tour. So let's go through and see what's going on. There's not too much new here, so we're going to kind of go through the driveway fairly quick. What is interesting is on this, with the long cord, somebody asked me, what's that long cord? This zucchini is actually making a major comeback. It's got so much fruit that looks so good, and I keep picking fruit, that there's a possibility I may not remove it, just for fun. I'll probably get rid of the sow thistle, kind of lean it up a little bit, and just continue to water it and take care of it. Look at this. I'm going to be setting up a lot of these this year. This is my two system. I have a whole video on it. We're going to get into this. This is where I compost in place. And I have ways of setting this up where nothing can get in here. Do you see all that? Do you know what that is? Papaya. Now I've got hundreds of little papaya plants growing and I'm not sure if I'm going to move them, keep them, what, but I've got a whole lot to say on that. And that gave me super ideas that I'll be getting into on the two systems and we'll get more into that later. I'm going to change all this by the way. I'm going to make more vertical gardens here and I'm going to move some of the totes and then I've got other areas down there I can move some totes against the wall. So this is my project coming up fairly quick as soon as I'm done with a few other things. Again, let's just walk through. This is an old eggplant from last year that is now loaded with flowers. It's going to do better obviously this year than it did last year. And I've got a lot of plants going into their second year that are doing better as far as eggplant, which is interesting on that. So I'm going to leave that. I've got a pepper. We had a pepper before. We got another peppered on here. Back here. So that's been a productive little plant down there. So I will get that off soon. I've got some small pepper. That's hot peppers. That is another black cobra. It's not doing as well. That was the little plant. There used to be three. I bought it in one pot. Remember, when you go to the nursery, check the pots out because a lot of times there's more than one plant in there. And you can easily take apart tomatoes and peppers. Easy, easy, easy to get those apart if they're in one pot. Even if the roots are intertwined, you can get them apart. So the little one never did that good. The big one has done fantastic. Here's the big one. It went all through the winter throwing peppers. Look at all the new peppers. See, there's the flowers. Then the new peppers are black, and then when they're ripe, they turn red. So keep that in mind. I know somebody that was using them black, they didn't know that they'll turn red. And I said, oh yeah. And the one that was in the middle, you know, like the three little bears, the middle one, my daughter got that one, and they were just loaded with peppers all last year. This is lettuce, set up in different ways. All the lettuce went to seed, which is perfect because I'm gonna collect the seeds from here and I'm gonna be growing a ton of lettuce like I did last year. We had no shortage of lettuce. I just tried a few different methods and they all worked. So the main thing was water, but they all worked. Purple tree collard, again, nothing has been done here. As you can see, I'm starting to collect some of the brown stuff because that is soil to me. That is valuable. The leeks are just starting to open. So hopefully the bees will do their thing and I will have leek seeds all for free. Compliments of Walmart. I told you the whole story on it. You can go back and see the video. They sent me the leeks with my grocery order. I didn't order them, but they can't take them back. So we ate them and then I chopped them off, put them in the bucket and they grew. And when I went to chop them off again to eat them again, you know, come again, it was already producing flowers. So Gary said, leave it, we'll collect the seeds. And being that it's done so well here, I know the seeds will do fantastic. So we'll grow the leek seeds from that. More lettuce. Here's the tomatoes coming back from last year. So I'm, look at this. This is under the tool. I put the tool here last year for the cucumbers to grow on because they can grip onto the tool as well. You could use that as a vertical garden. And the, well, what happened was the tomato plant went underneath and grew. And remember, you don't have to get them pollinated by bees. The wind actually just moving pollinates the tomatoes. So nothing's getting to them. So no birds can get to those. Isn't that a cool way of growing them? I think that's really cool. 
So it, it, but this wasn't done on purpose. Then I've got some the more lettuce and celery and lettuce and celery, some green sorrel. I haven't done anything last year. I grew radishes in there. I'm not sure what I'm going to grow in there. Walking onions, purple tree collard. This is an old squash. It's not a zucchini. See, they're kind of round. And that I'm probably going to take out. I don't want it. I'll put something else in there that I'm going to use. More peppers, green sorrel, a little bit of geranium. And then again, I trim that back. This is the Goliath tomato. We got a ton of tomatoes. Look, there's one little dried up one left here, which I could take and squish into the soil and grow if I want to. It's coming back. It's got flowers. See, now this was labeled as a determinant. And I don't know, we've just gotten so many tomatoes on it, I don't know what to say on that, but it's supposed to be a determinant and it just keeps going. So maybe it's happy here and it just wants to keep growing tomatoes, I don't know. Then that as a moringa back there, then a lot of pe peppers. And look at this, more pe little tiny plant with a great big beautiful pepper. Really need to cater to that better, we need more than one pepper on there. And then again, lettuce, walking onions, there's garlic chives in there. This is nothing, I haven't done anything. More walking on. I'm going to have to do something separate again on walking onions and probably make 10 videos on that. Walking onions is something everybody should grow. I don't care if you're not even growing food and you're growing flowers. You can grow flowers with walking onions. That is one of the best greens, best vegetable plants you can grow. As you'll see, we'll walk by. I have not had to buy walking onions since the first day I bought them, and I don't even know how many years ago. I bought them on eBay, a bunch of them, for like seven, eight dollars, and now I've got hundreds, if not more. Best thing to grow, I'll get more on it and explain more about it, and please, whatever you do, before we get into the other video on walking onions, do not buy seeds from anybody, because walking onions, should not be producing seeds. And once they produce seeds, something happened to them and you won't get the full benefit of growing walking onions. Let's keep going, yes, yes. Another avocado tree. I don't know, that's just uh, sow thistle coming through. Like I said, I'm just starting to go through here. I had my sage growing in here and I pulled it out. Literally pulled it out. <laughs> Half a pot, you can't do that? I know you can't. But I pulled it out and it's in my pizza garden now and I didn't bother with the basil because I've got a ton of baby basil coming up. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I'll plant something else. I might move this whole thing and maybe set up more buckets here. I really like buckets too. So I'm not sure. These are carrots from last year and we pick them as we need them. So we've got some carrots and this is also from last year. I only got one or two eggplant on it and now it's making a comeback. It almost looks like eggplant does better in its second year, which is interesting. Oh, I'm going to talk about this in a second. This is where I grew all the cabbage, and I want to get more cabbage growing. The only issue is in here, I've got a full of bunch of tomato, uh, potatoes, I'm sorry, a whole bunch of potatoes in there to harvest. I think I've got potatoes to harvest in there, and then this, look at this, this beautiful tomato plant came up. Oh, I'm sorry, the tomato plant's in here. Something else is in here. What is in here? Oh, this is the onions. This is the onions that grew from baby onions. These are not walking onions. They're white onions, but I had one plant produce baby onions. Didn't look like walking onions, just looked like round little onions. So when they actually grew a set, they call them sets when they're starting and they look like a little onion. So I took the sets, I planted them. I don't want to do anything with this because it's now flowering and I want to see what it grows. It probably will grow seeds, but it was interesting that the plant grew sets. So I collected all the sets, planted them in there with the cabbage, because I didn't want to just have a tote doing nothing, waiting for onions. So I grew cabbage, which was wonderful. There's nothing better than homegrown cabbage. And then I'm going to let this do its thing. And I still have the cabbage in here. By the way, these leaves taste fantastic. See, the cabbage is still growing. I can still pick this and use this for stir fry or whatever I want. But I'm planning on really getting in here and seeing if there's potatoes in here, because I know there's potatoes in there. I just haven't had the time. Now, going back to the tomato plant, I don't want to dump this and go through because I showed you this, look. And I know I felt in there, there's, there must be more. I want to get the potatoes out gently, but I don't want to really, you know, damage that tomato plant because it's doing fantastic. But look how beautiful, how it's hugging the worm wall. 
this is just a gorgeous plant. So I want to go in there gently, get all the potatoes out of there. I'll show you what I get and then freshen it up a little bit with maybe the cabbage leaves and stuff. Put a little bit of something on top, a mulch, soil, wood chips, grass clippings, whatever you want on top. So everything breaks down and continues to feed this tomato plant for all summer. And I'll get tomatoes off of that. Now going back to this, this is interesting. Not that there's anything in there that's interesting. It's just some sow thistle that the goldfinch is coming in and eat, but it's kind of toppled over and some Swiss chard. What's interesting is I had a piece of turmeric last year that I thought was dried up and no good, and I shoved it in there. Well, it grew and I reached in. I didn't dig it out. Oh, and there's walking onions in here too. I reached in and pushed in the turmeric, like I said, and then it grew. And then what I did was I pulled it out and we ate it. But I wasn't sure if I got it all. Well, I didn't get it all. Look at this. This is turmeric growing. Now, why is this interesting? Because this is the only turmeric on the property growing. The rest have not grown. So I do want to get the Swiss chart out. I want to leave this. It's giving me other ideas. I'll get the Swiss chart out so the turmeric's got more room. The reason this turmeric's growing, let's step back is this wall. The cement blocks are creating heat. The heat goes from the wall into the tote. Now remember, when you start setting up a fresh tote and have a little bit of greens and browns mixed in there, when you touch it sometimes, it will feel gently warm. This does not, because this is last year's. But it's picking up some heat from the wall and it's created its own microsystem. And because of that, it thinks it's warm enough to grow. All the other turmeric on the property here is not growing yet. It's waiting until June, probably, until our nights are staying close to 60 degrees. But that must be staying close to 60 degrees all the time and it's growing. I'll show you when we get to the front, but let's go now into the front yard. So now we're in the front yard. And you know, the stuff is actually that I planted is doing quite well. I've got the different types of zucchini coming up here. I've got the cocozels, and then I've got here another cocozel, and I believe in here, if I labeled it correctly, is a black beauty. Put a cage on top so nothing will bother it, but I'm starting to pull them off. I've got some garlic planted in here. Probably not gonna do much because we're really towards the end of the season with garlic. And then I've got broccoli for you know who. Kitty Kitty gets broccoli, right? So I've got broccoli spotted there and there. We'll see what happens. I put some tool on that. Something was munching on it. And then here, I can lift this up real quick. Let me lift it up. Got a couple tomatoes that I yanked out, you know, from the rainbow garden, but this, it's a unique tomato. This is a delicious, and the seeds are from 2010. I gave, gave a couple to my daughter. I know you're very interested. I gave a couple to my daughter. She's going to see if she can keep them growing. They're growing slow, but actually that one's got some pretty good size, so I've got to get the other ones planted too. And then over here, I've got the broccoli went to seed. You've seen that. The succulents are just doing their own thing. They're just there because they were here when the house was, you know, bought. But then I've got celery. See, it's going to go to seed. This is the red celery. And it's going to go to seed. I've got a tree collard. My onions, I'm waiting to see what's going to happen with them because one of them threw the baby onions last time. So the flowers are getting ready to open and we'll see how that goes. And then I've got all this mint here. And I'm going to be planting that in different places. So I'm slowly clearing out these pots and the soil because I've got valuable mint that I want. That's a goat screaming down the hill if you heard it. That was not Kitty, right? It wasn't you. And then I just planted some geraniums there. And then I've got all the walking onions. Look at the walking onions. Look how they're walking. They're all over. See, when you leave them, these are onions here. This is not for you to eat. It's also going to create some baby onions on the top. Isn't that cool? She thinks it's cool. She thinks it's something to eat. No, no, no. So they're doing really well. And I'm actually, let me show you over here, going to set up on this table over here, walking onions up here. Because look at these. This is amazing. This is just a, you know, a dish pan container. And the walking onions are doing fabulous. So let's go through 
I don't have anything yet for you here. Oh, and then here I've got more walking onions. And so that's been the same table set up and they're doing really, really well. And then here I'm just gonna start setting up. This is all stuff from last year, but I'm gonna throw more kitchen scraps in here and then more things from the garden in here. And then I will set all this up with different things, be it tomatoes or probably not peppers because we don't, are you really listening to me? She's cold, it's been raining. So, but she wanted to come out, so I took her out. Here I'm, I will probably go with squash. Zuc zucchini does really, really well here. Because even though it gets shade from the pine trees, it gets a lot of warmth here, and so it just does really good. I get these ones that are like torpedoes or watermelon. So I'm gonna grow a lot of zucchini and probably some tomatoes there. Having done, like I said, nothing in here. And then here is a red bean sorrel. I ended up putting it back. It was on the ground, this tote. I wasn't sure what I was gonna put there. So I put the red bean sorrel back, and I've got another celery back here, a red celery. And then I've got, of course, the purple tree collard. It's really too big for that pot, but for now I'm gonna leave it. It's kind of busted the pot. This is just all dinosaur kale from last year. And that's the backside of the unit that Gary built me out of like a puzzle, out of cement. And he says he's almost done with the video, so we'll see. And look at the finger lime. We had this tree sitting all year on the side of the driveway. And now that we've moved it, I had Gary move it out here. It is loaded with teeny, teeny little finger lime. So this will be exciting the next couple months to see what happens. That's basically it. So let's go down here and go take a look at what's going on on the ginger table. More walking onions, yes. Walking onions, you can stick them everywhere. All walking onions, all growing in here. You can, again, walking onions everywhere. Look at that, walking onions up there. Okay, let's go over here. This is what I was talking about. This is the black turmeric. I planted that in the blue bucket so I'd remember, because it's really purple and kind of a purpley blue, that it's black turmeric. You can actually see where it didn't get quite buried all through here and all through here. So these three here are black turmeric. The rest is gonna be a mix of turmeric and ginger. That's stevia back there and that's coming back. Stevia does like it warm so it's kind of hugging the wall it's still not quite warm enough because we're not staying about 60 degrees. We're sometimes dropping down to 50 and it's just too cold at night. And even if it goes under 40, like into the 40s, it's still too cold for the, a lot of these plants. But as you can see, I haven't done anything in here. I have to dig them out because I want to separate what I want to eat, freeze some of it and then put it back, repot it. This is ginger. And there's more ginger there. I have the tool in here just because I've got scrap tool around. So might as well just put it here. I'm not sure what's in here. I have to get in here and look. But if you can see, nothing is growing. See, there's nothing growing. This is further down. So I'm not sure what's in here without, oh, 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 ginger. That's ginger. All right, so I've got ginger here and then I think there's turmeric in here. But again, I don't know until I get into it and start tearing it all apart. But that's what I wanted to show you. Even though it's against the wall, it's not warm enough because over there, it gets the sun. The sun is there all the time. Here, it has the house, so it has some sunlight coming through here. Once it passes the pine trees, it comes here. They have sun all day, but it's not warm enough to give it enough warmth to grow. And then by the time it's getting warm, the sun's gone, even though it's in the afternoon. And then it's sitting with no sun again. This does fantastic all summer and into fall. But until now, you know, the, right now in our weather in spring, it won't grow yet. In about a month, this is just gonna pop up into life. You're gonna come back and look at it. Because if you look back at some of the old garden tours, you'll see in October how beautiful and green it is because it's got the warmth of summer. It's not so much the sunlight, ginger and turmeric don't need to have as much sunlight as let's say tomatoes and peppers and zucchinis and all the other plants, but they need the warmth. So until they know it's warm enough, they won't grow. And the same thing here, I've got it all in here. And I think I'm gonna change some around. Rotting vegetables I didn't eat, some sort of squash. So I've got to get them up against the wall. And once they're up against the wall, they're gonna start growing, you'll wait and see. It's gonna be amazing. So the ones I'm gonna move for next year up against the wall, or maybe even this year will start to grow. 
and the ones that are here that are still staying a little cooler won't grow. So it's something to think about when you're setting them up. Why do I have them not in full sunlight? They get burnt. We get really hot here in Southern California and come summer, they don't like the full, at least here for me, they don't like the full sun and the full heat. So this is perfect. They get the morning sun and then even though it's, let's say 100 degrees, 90, 100 degrees and it's blazing sunlight, by that time they're in shade but they've got the heat and they just do fantastic here. And that is why I'm not moving it because they do fantastic at the right time. Now let's go into the bird garden. So now we're in the bird garden. Here you can see, look at the walking onions. Oh gosh, I cannot wait to make a whole field of walking onions in the front yard in different places. And she can't eat that. They're going there good. I have some green sorrel here, but something's been chewing on it. But I'm not going to worry about that. I have so much all over. Here I'm going to get some squash in here. I may spot a tomato in there. I'm not sure because I have hundreds of tomato plants. The tree collar that's been there I planted, you know, from just the cutting is doing fantastic. This is all broccoli. Shame on me. Oh, look, there's broccoli. Shame on Look at this. I know who likes broccoli. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Look what I've got for you. Where'd she go? All right, well, she'll show up in a minute. She's around here somewhere looking around. Okay, the broccoli I didn't trim back. So what I ended up with not that much broccoli, I ended up with a lot of flowers. See, there's a couple little heads. When you don't trim your broccoli, this is actually the start, in case you don't know, of the flower. And then you leave it and then, you know, it starts, it opens up to a flower and then it opens up to seed pods. What's fascinating is the whole plant is used by nature. You've got the, oh, she's back. Okay, so now, <laughs> let's get back to this. You got the flowers, you know, first you have this that we eat, and a lot of bugs like it too. <laughs> you know, your aphids like it and stuff. And then of course the flowers open and you have all the bees that come to the flowers and hummingbirds come to the yellow flowers. And then it turns into seed pods which is over here. These are the green seed pods. And you have the house finches and the goldfinches eat that. And then that's basically it. It will dry up and other birds will eat it dry. And if you want to collect it, you can collect it. I have another piece. Of course I do. So it's whatever you want to do. I can left it. I mean, I really should have picked it earlier, but it's coming back and all I have to do is trim it. And then I'll end up with a whole bunch more. See, this will open up soon to a flower too, if I leave it. Am I going to leave this to open up to, oh, I dropped it. You didn't know I dropped it. It's right there. So that's it. And then I've got mint. Let's keep going. I've got lemon verbena. I've got that purple tree collard. It's kind of fallen over, but it makes fantastic cuttings until I eventually either trim it down, take it out or whatever. This is the old dinosaur kale. Let's down here. More walking onions. See, they're, oh, they, yeah, these are walking onions. They're going to be walking and having babies, red vein sorrow. This is, like I said, this is all dinosaur kale. This was cuttings from the back that were over five years old. That's a dead dinosaur kale. I leave that, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, this, I leave this as a perch for the birds to come in. I trimmed it all back, but I do leave that. So this way the birds can land on it. Of course, you see my dragon fruit plant growing. No fruit yet, and probably not until the weather warms up. Once the weather warms up, it'll start to throw flowers. Let's swing over here. Now this, I thought at first was dinosaur kale, but looking at it now, see it's gone the seed. I think it was seeds that I planted or fell in there and grew because I see purple, which means it might have been hybridized from the blue, you know, uh, dazzling blue kale. So that's my thought now. And that's beautiful. Am I going to collect the seeds? No, you know who eats the seeds? Look at this. See, it hasn't opened yet. She thinks this is broccoli. So it must have the some, same flavor as broccoli because she'll eat that and think it's just as good. So it works out good. See, this is the dazzling blue kale. And that was growing here. So it must have gone the seed. And then I've got celery and some garlic chives, more walking onions. And some of the seeds must have fallen here and I catered to them and I, was, I couldn't remember and I thought it was dinosaur kale. But dinosaur kale doesn't have that vein. See, the vein is purple. So that's what I believe happened, which is quite nice. I think it's beautiful because here, they're all green. This is dinosaur kale. See, this is going to seed. So one of the dinosaur kales obviously intercrossed, crossbred with the dazzling blue kale and developed that. I haven't gotten to this yard yet, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time in here. 
I can't keep giving you broccoli. I don't know. I mean, look, broccoli is a good thing, but too much of a good thing is not a good thing either. All right, so let's go back to here. I'm going to be working on this and clearing a lot of this out. Because what I want to do here is have this as a bird garden. I'm going to put different types of bird bass there. Don't look, I haven't done the video on that yet. Um, I did the other styrofoam. This has been really cool. I've got this tote, this old tote that's probably got, gosh, five or six years old now. It's got a little bit left of the purple sprouting broccoli. And I'm not sure if I'm going to end up taking it out, but I left a little bit until I decide. I actually put a cutting down there, and the cutting is growing down there. That's a purple tree colored growing there. So I'm going to come in here at some point and really give it a lot of thought as far as what I want to do. By the way, you know, like I said, it keeps raining off and on, so I may have to duck in if it starts to rain again. So right now, I'm analyzing. This is the unit that my daughter gave me for the holidays for Christmas, and then I'm going to leave. I got it in the ground. Put the whole thing together myself, stuck it in the ground, figured it's staying there. Then I've got the tree stump. The only problem with the tree stump, the way it's sitting, is it's, it's an invitation for the squirrels. I mean, look, they have all this cover. They come in and they grab food. But, you know, if they only grab from there and they don't bother the other bowls, I'm perfectly fine with that. So that's really okay. So I'm going to come through here and decide. But it's going to be mainly food growing in here but bird friendly. I want to bring in the birds, give them a lot of cover because they can hide in everything, come in here, eat, take a bath, which they do. And I think it's just so beautiful. Then of course I've got my one electric fountain, which is right here. The goldfinches are literally, as you can see, right in front of me coming in. And then the rest that you see, they're not really going, even though that one's going in the cloud and in the rain, the rest are all solar. I'm gonna probably change a lot of these out. Either retire them or pull them in, scrub them up, and kind of change the feature. I've got other things I like better. And that's what's so cool on the solar fountains. There's so much you can do with that. And you get tired of it and change it around or just for fun, see what, what works better. So I'm going to change some of these around. And then that's basically it here. Well, real quick, we can look that way. And then here is my garlic. This has been amazing. This is lettuce growing. I covered this so the birds wouldn't eat it. And I may uncover it soon because I do want it to throw some lettuce seeds. See, this is all lettuce seeds, and I just grab these, crush it in the ground, and grow it. I'm going to tear that apart. I used to call that kitty's garden. It's got a lot of beautiful celery in there, but I think I want something else there. I might take the celery out, put it in a flower pot, and stick it somewhere else. And then, like I said, this is all garlic and lettuce and a lot of cuttings in the other one. So we'll do the same one collecting. Collecting a whole lot of leaves, because I've got a whole lot to set up. So what else? This is kind of a collard. I don't know if it's a pure, purebred collard that came up from seed or what, because I didn't plant it. A lot of this stuff just comes up, so whatever it is, it is. And then see, let's keep going. This is all mint on the ground. This is spearmint growing, and we do use that more so in the summer, it seems like. I make a whole lot more mint tea in the summer, and I really know I need it because I can tell my skin is so much better when I'm drinking a lot of mint tea. Then this is orange mint, and again, all the walking onions. And remember, if you're setting up a garden, you can always grab different bits and pieces of your collard or kale. Just stick it in there and forget about it. And you can be sprouting a whole bunch of it, you know, while you're growing. So it's kind of like you don't have to cater to another plant that you want to grow. You're actually growing it on its own. See, here's a seed that's coming up. I have no idea what this is going to be. It could be anything. It just came up out of this little pot here. There's probably another one down there. So I can move it out and see what it grows into because I'm sure so much of this has been hybridized. That's the other electric pump. There's only two electric pumps here and the rest that go all the time are solar fountains. And then, uh, let's see, this is still spearmint, more mint. I've got some geraniums through here because, again, some of the geraniums fall into pots and grow. Geraniums here grow like weeds, in case you want to know. Certain geraniums. Don't get into the fancy ones if you're out here. They don't seem to do as well, but the, the, I don't even know what they're called, that one. You probably know what they're called. They literally grow like weeds. You may not even have any geraniums on your property, and somehow they end up there, and then they grow into these massive bushes, which is really cool. Again, more walking onions growing back there. This came up from seed. Obviously, it's a hybrid of some sort of kale and collard cross because of the shape of the leaf. And that's it. This is just Swiss chard coming up. This is the one I really want to work with. This is really nice. It's a cross between something. It could be a two-way cross, a three-way cross. 
Now you would say, how in the world can it be three-way? Well, if something came up like the one that's back there, that's, I'm gonna say half dinosaur kale and half dazzling blue kale. If that one has seeds, but it crossed with a collard or a purple tree collard or something else, then the seeds will be a three-way cross. And if it hybridizes with something else that was a double cross, not with that, you could have a four-way cross, which means the seeds will grow like something you're not even recognizing from your garden. That's what this is. See how massive this gets, but how the leaves look? Very much like a dinosaur kale, but if you look, it's very flat, but they're so deep green. And what's fascinating is in the summer, they turned round. Now the reason I think they're elongated right now is because it's going to seed. There's some places on here where it had seed heads. So it wants to go to seed so the leaf kind of changed shape. But in the summer, the leaves were round. Like it would be a perfect wrap to take some off, steam it, and then wrap something in it and eat it that way. Really cool. See, a lot of the fountains are just barely burping. By the way, this is natural algae growing. So I don't worry about natural algae, but you can scrub it off with like a a, like something like a Brillo pad, not with the soap. A stainless steel type of scrubber, you could if you want. I leave it, you could bleach it out, but I just leave it. And then again, see more seedlings coming up that kind of have like a little bit of a purple tinge. So that's them all crossing with the dazzling blue kale there and then more walking onions. I haven't done anything in here. I'm gonna get this all set up. I was gonna do a fountain, a pond actually, but we changed our mind. I don't want a pond in here. Gary's got his ponds, let him do his ponds, but I'm, I'm not gonna do ponds. Then I've got my tree collard. If I seem a little bit anxious, it's only because I wanna keep an eye on her and make sure she doesn't try to get out somewhere. I worry about her when I'm not seeing her. And then I've got the tree collard. This is the one that fell over. And then it, you, let me see, we can walk over here. I've shown this before. No, oh, I can't even get through here, everything's wet. My camera's gonna get one. See, this is the one that fell over. See how it fell over? And what it did was it grew all these trunks and I've got them going everywhere, which is ridiculous to be honest. But I've got it going through the fence there. I've got it growing up here. So I can take cutting. See, this would be the perfect cutting to take this piece here and just snip it off and stick this trunk, oh, maybe about four or five inches in some soil and then the whole top will grow into a brand new beautiful tree colored. That's just a green tree colored. Then this is purple tree colored all through here. Lemon verbena in the ground. The lemon verbena is in the ground. See, not everything is in containers here. The tree colored is in the ground. Again, I didn't stake this up good. And as you can see, it is going everywhere. And this, this is a dazzling blue kale. This is a pure dazzling blue kale. See how rich green it is and how purple it is? That's why I think the other one hybridized. Let me try to get out of here. It hybridized and has that hint of the dazzling blue kale, which is really cool. Even this one. I'm not even sure what this one is. Probably hybridized again and came up from seed and boy, did they grow. But when they're got a seed head on them, the leaf changes. More walking onions, I showed you that. More walking onions. And then a cutting of a tree collar. Actually, that cutting is from the original old tree collar that was here. I took it and I put it in this tote. I haven't planted anything in it. See, they're burping. The sun is making them burp, but they're not really going yet because we don't have any sun. Oh, look here. A tomato plant came up from seed and I know it's full of tomatoes. This is what I always talk about. The best tomatoes you can grow, like less diseases and, and happy, the plant itself are the ones that the fruit fell and grew. That means it's happy here and it wants to grow. So it has been fantastic. I have got to stake that up. This is why I really didn't go out to the nursery and buy any tomatoes this year because the tomato plants that come up from seeds, you know, from fruit that fell, have been doing so fantastic and they taste good that I'm quite happy with those. So I don't need to bring something in that grew in a greenhouse and then I got to cater to it and make sure, you know, it's getting the proper water and the proper everything. Otherwise it might die back. So that's why I really, really do like having the, the seeds from my own garden. But that's not to say I would not buy. I do periodically buy. I just haven't gone to a nursery this year. So I'm, I, am, I mean, didn't go last year either. So I grew what came up in our yard. See here again, purple tree colored in the ground. And look at that, it's going to seed. 
So when you see the flowers open, and this has got flowers, and then you've got the color down there that's got flowers, they're cross-pollinating on a good day, not today, it's cold and wet. The bees are taking the pollen from there to there, and that's why they can go to all the different types of colored and kale. They will all cross-pollinate, and you can end up with who knows what. But again, it doesn't mean it's bad, it's edible. It could be something better than what you started with. Eggplant, they're, come, they're really making a nice comeback in there. Got a lot of flowers right now. Trimmed it back and planted some eggplant. And now they're starting to really take hold. So we'll see how that goes. Don't, haven't done anything in here. That's an eggplant. Look at the comeback it's doing now. So the weather is turning right. Garlic chives in the ground. And then these big things, four o'clocks. Those are flowers. Those are all flowers and the hummingbirds like them. I will say they grow like weeds and they can take over the garden. So I'm not really thrilled with them. I want to get some in pots and maybe do it that way. And then more walking onions down there. Again, here I have not done anything. See, seeds fly in here and that's how you end up with different things growing in this. And then again, walking onions. See, I haven't done anything back here. I want to change all this. I want to get rid of the cage. And I want to move that somewhere else. I'm going to, of course, leave the papayas because there is zero way to move that. Those roots are straight into the ground. Even though this tote is all broke now and everything, really not a good idea to grow like eight or nine papaya plants, trees, in one single small tote. You know, I, I can't complain. It's actually done beautiful and we get fruit off of it. But that's going to stay and I'm not sure if I'm going to leave any of these here. The birds have just been coming and munching the best part. And then the leaves grow and they're all full of holes. But the, the white crown started it and now the house finches and even the gold finches have been munching on it. So I'm going to decide what I want to do here. But I think I might put some chairs and totes here. It would be a good area to do it. Move this. And this is, this is good. If you've got an old dog crate or an old cage that's big. See how big this is? You could, if you've got a cat problem or a hawk problem, you could put a bowl in there and the birds will come eat and no hawks can get them. And as far as cats, the cats can't get them either. Because by the time the cat would jump up and try to get in, they'd be long gone because the cat can't do an even jump on them. He can't just creep up and grab them. There's no way he has to go through that. So that's why I set that up because it's out in the open like this in case a hawk came down. The hawk needs to swoop and he cannot swoop through that. He will actually strangle himself. He would, he would just go right into it and that would be the end of him. So they won't do it. And that's it. And again, that's just a bed of walking onions. I just took the babies and I put them in that tote. And let's see, I think that's it for in here. My moringa is just starting to make a comeback there. And then I've got this moringa. You know, I trimmed that all the way down last year. Look how tall I got. I'm going to have to trim this down. I don't want it that high. And then, of course, I've got more mint. That's probably chocolate mint. Okay, let's go into the rainbow garden. Kitty's investigating over there. What did you find over there, Kitty? And this is, look at this. Beautiful tomatoes on a skimpy, skimpy vine. Yes, you, you're listening to me. It's very important. And then I've got Malabar spinach growing in there. And it never died back this winter. So we didn't get all that cold. And the Malabar spinach kept growing. All right, so you've seen the garden. Isn't that beautiful? I look at it off and on and think, eh. But then I realize I didn't plant anything. This is all from last year. So, I, you know, thinking about it, I didn't do any work. And it's just been growing, some of them, for years. And I think it's perfect for me. But I do want to clean this up. I want it to look really cool. I want to be able to sit out here and enjoy the birds. I do like the big plants. The reason I leave my plants big, all the collard and the kale, is because it gives the birds cover. We have a lot of birds that come in here, house finches, and we've got over 50 species of birds that come in here, and they use the vegetable plants as cover. It gives them a sense of security that they have someplace they can dart into in case they see danger. So they can just hide in the plants, and that's what's important. And then on top of that, they eat a lot of the greens, and that's perfectly fine with me. You got so much, why not share? I'm not going to eat it all. And then they're doing their job in the garden. The, uh, the seed eaters come in and eat the seed I put out. But then you've got the insect eaters that come in to take baths, and they're eating the insects off my garden. And we do not use a single type of pesticide. The only thing I do sometimes is if there's too much on there, come out with a hose, 
the water and just wash it off and that's actually good enough for me. All right, let's go and see the rainbow garden and see what's going on out here. So now we're out here, there's the rosemary and let's just quickly look at the papayas. You see them each month, you're probably tired of it. They're growing through here. They're growing all through here. They're growing above my head. They better not fall on my head like a coconut. <laughs> and then I've got some squash starting. That was just the mix of wild, uh, wild, I call it wild, just squash seeds from hybrid squash that we ate. I don't know what they are. I just dumped a whole bunch of seeds in there and they're growing. I don't know what they're gonna grow. I'm not catering to it. I'm not taking care of it. Maybe I'll thin some out later. There's some more there. Have not set this one up yet for this papaya. What I think I'm going to do here is set up a couple more totes and this way it will feed the papayas. I might, I might grab a, a more, maybe some more papayas to plant here, but I'm not sure yet. And then there's another squash. It might be a zucchini. It didn't get labeled. So I'm not sure what that is. And then of course more papaya. I was gonna trim off the browning leaves because remember I compost all this for the papaya, but I'm thinking we've been so cold at night. I'm gonna leave the leaves, see the, the breeze? The wind chill factor is always going to be cooler than just the air itself. And I figured maybe by nature, I don't know that the leaves are protecting the fruit or the upper part of the trunk of the plants. So I decided right now not to trim them. If it was summer, I would trim them. But right now not to trim them, leave them just the way they are. And then at the right time, or when I think might be right enough, I'll trim them out when the weather is warmer and go from there. So I didn't trim them, but that's them. You've seen them, they're all in pots. They've left their pots and they're growing in the ground. More rosemary and the bottle brush is beautiful. I love the bottle brush. Okay, the rainbow garden. I'm gonna do a separate one on the rainbow garden. Let's look from this end here. You can see here what's growing. This has been amazing. Look at, look at, you know, who likes this? Might just let this, I'm gonna see how big this gets first and then chop it off. I probably should get it, take it off before something else takes it. I took off the one here and then I've been picking this. This one's growing more like a broccolini, which is perfect. Now I can force the plants to do that. By removing the head, it will get more side shoots. But let me tell you something. We've got two varieties here and I'm not sure exactly what varieties they are. Now, why am I saying that? Look at the green leaf, very, very green. See how this is growing like spears? Now I thought it came out of the same seed packet and I don't think it got labeled other than broccoli, but this is growing very different. I actually prefer this. Perfect to cut the spears and use them, you know, as like a broccolini. You would use them for stir fry. See all the broccoli growing? Now this one, look at the leaf. It's more of a silvery. And this one wants to grow ahead. See the difference? So we've got two different ones growing here, obviously. And I mean, it's all, it's all good, but I actually prefer that one. So what I could do on that one, if it grows exactly the way I like it, even if it came out of the same seed packet, I can get some cuttings off of that and start that plant and keep that one going. I may do that. Oh, our friends are here. And then <laughs> I've got here the zucchini and we're gonna go on the other side and I'll show you. See what I do? I just took a piece of dinosaur kale and I just stuck it in here. See that? Because this way I'm taking care of my zucchini. It's just kind of a hint. You should do that too if you want. Put some pieces in there. Now this thing is trying to get tall to get to the sunlight. But now I've got a new dinosaur kale that I can move anywhere I want. This is a pepper plant. This is a black cobra. It came, it started growing. It came up in a pot where the black cobras were growing. And I took this one and this is doing really good. So I'm really happy with that. But that's a zucchini. Look at the mustard. I don't know why, but I have found that mustard plant grows really, really good with onions. Oh, look at my onions. They're big, they're big. You would say they're too close together. Well, they don't care. They're massive. I can't get you in there. Look at that. There are a whole bunch of them. They're massive, they're like that big. So I'm really excited with the onions. And then of course, more, what do you call it? The more purple uh, mustard. I'm gonna go on the other side. And then let's see my tomatoes there. Let's go over here. The strawberries have been doing fantastic. I love this chair, the way it turns. Look at the strawberries. We've been picking bowls of strawberries. Look at this, I can uncover it, I'm here. I just don't want the birds to get it. I draped over the tool 
and the squirrels, nothing bothers it. And it's cool. Remember, this whole thing turns. I don't know if I can get you back far enough. I did a whole video on this. I absolutely love this. Absolutely love this. I've got squash growing on the bottom. I can turn them, service them that way. And if you had it up against the wall, you could turn it to give them sunlight or to just pick strawberries. It's been wonderful. Now here is the zucchini. I am finally getting zucchini. Now the first ones, I should pick that one and use it, were all females. So they haven't been fertilized by male pollen. There has been no pollen in there. So they're only gonna get about that size and then they're gonna stop growing. Now there's been some male flowers. You've got the male, like this is a male flower. See, there's no fruit on the bottom. That's a male flower and there's more male flowers there. But when they first started, they only had the female flowers that have the fruit and then you end up with small zucchini that just stops growing. So if you ever have zucchini and it only gets to about that big, and they're not growing. See if you've got male flowers. You can hand pollinate them yourself. Very simple to do. We can get into that another time if you want. But that's why a lot of times your zucchini won't grow because for whatever reason, maybe really early in the season, they're only throwing female flowers and then they have nothing to pollinate. So they just stop, they're done. They can't get any bigger because what they do by nature is the fruit wants to get bigger and bigger and produce seeds so it can live on with its seeds. But if it doesn't get fertilized, then the fruit's not gonna get big because there's no reason for the plant, basically nature, to have it grow because it will never develop seeds, so it stops growing. See, there's a female fruit. See the fruit underneath? See this right here? That's a zucchini. This is a flower that's gonna open. And that will be pollinated by a male. And see, your ants are your friends. They are actually pollinating as well. And then when they get pollinated, they'll get big like that one. And that's what you want, male and female flowers at the same time. But I could take a male from there, strip off the petals and pollinate it myself. And I think I've got videos on that. Tomato plants, they were just put in here, some from cuttings, not, I don't know, they're all different. Here is the black sugar cane, which I have to get out fairly quick. I will probably just be yanking that out and giving it its own bucket or having Gary plant it somewhere. I have a hummingbird that keeps coming up. See all the zucchini? See, it's got a lot. See the ants? As long as the ants aren't killing your plants, they're also pollinators too. So they go around, they want some pollen, but they go from flower to flower. So some have pollen. If they're female flowers, they don't have pollen, but they go into the males, they collect what they want in there. Then they go into the other one and they're pollinating. So. Ants are, aren't always bad. Bok choy, Chinese cabbage, it's gone to seed. Here it is, isn't that beautiful? Grew it from seeds, ordered some seeds online. And this is so good to eat raw. I come out here and eat it raw. There's the purple mustard, more lettuce. The zucchini just came up, so we'll see what happens with that. That's my cutting of my rose. I try to do a lot of different things in the garden because this way if I want some cuttings from something I don't have to think about it I actually have some cuttings somewhere that I forgot about let me see where they, there they are these are pepinos took this from Gary's garden and I just took some cuttings that's all they are and there's two of them there and this way I just forget about it it's under the plant it's not going to get burned by the sun and it's going to grow and then when i want i can move them they'll have by then they'll have roots i can move them anywhere i want more purple mustard lettuce it's all gone the seed the bush tits have been coming in and eating the insects the gold finches have been coming in and eating the seeds to feed their babies and then this you've seen already this is the field of tomatoes and i am going to set up another one here just for seeds. That's all I'm gonna do is I wanna get some seeds growing and it has been really, really good to use this as a seed nursery and I don't have to think about it. This is not even supposed to be there. It's just lettuce in a black container. And my pizza garden, oh my gosh, gotta get that video up. This is not what you think it is, so we'll get into that more, but I've got sage growing lettuce, oregano, thyme, more lettuce. I've got baby basil coming up in here. Where's the baby basil? Hey, the baby basil, see? See the leaf? I sprinkled some basil seeds, and this one's purple, look. Actually, they're all purple. Let me see if I can get you in here. See, purple basil. So I'm gonna have, hopefully, some green basil and purple basil. Then I've got tomatoes, I've got some peppers on the top, and this is just some cuttings I did off the rose. Rosemary, look at that. 
and I really don't want it growing there. I'm going to give it its own pot. I've got some tomatoes here, but what I really want are the peppers, and I'll probably end up yanking out the tomatoes on the top and getting peppers. Not 100% sure. We'll get into how I made that. It's not what you see or what you think it is. That was made in such a unique way that I am going to be doing a whole bunch of those. Then I've got garlic. This is all garlic growing in here, and some of the blueberries. Eh, I don't think they're doing that great. It's I'm going to probably end up, when the garlic comes out, moving that more in the sun. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. Some more sage. I've got, that came off my deck. There's two plants in here, I believe. Two distinct plants. And what I'm going to do is give this to Gary. I might plant one in a bucket, separate it, and give him the other one. This came from the 99 cents. They're over a year ago. They were selling them to eat them. They were coming in these little packets. And they had like a whole bunch of plants and I planted them instead of eating them. And now I've got all the sage I want. It's unreal. Going to put something back here. This is a feeding station for hummingbirds. This is a water fountain, a solar fountain I made. And then here is the solar panel. And I made the panel from a tote lid. Look at that. It's a holder. And we'll get into that if you want. That holds my panel up. This is just lettuce in a bucket because I'm actually going to use that for something else for that container, which is now getting moved because I changed my mind and it's going to get moved on that wall and something else is going here. But this is still an important container to me because when this is set up, it will feed all the plants that are heavy feeders once I have this one set up. So I'm almost here because everything else is pretty much set up here. This is more garlic and this is potato mint. The top is yellow, which is interesting, and underneath growing is very green, but I need to separate that because I want to put another, you know, some more plants in there. I want to have two totes. So I want to put another tomato mint growing in there, and then this tomato, potato, not potato, potato mint grows little potatoes. You can eat them raw, or you can cook them in soup or stir fry or anything you want to use potatoes for. You can eat them cooked. And you can eat them raw or cooked, but, that, but they're too crowded because last time I had one plant in here and it took over the whole tote. I planted six plants in here, which now has gotten so big, but I also used the soil that was inside the tote that was here, which means there were tiny, tiny ones I didn't see, and now they're growing. It really grows really prolific if you find the right spot for it. It happens to love late afternoon sun. And Gary saw that, so he's changed around his potato mint. He took a lot of mine, and I'm just going to fill that up with leaves and twigs and sticks and stuff. And then I'm going to pull some of these out. And this is just lettuce, romaine lettuce. I grow lettuce everywhere. I grow lettuce everywhere. Look at this. And that's the other strawberry thing. And this is just the strawberry tower. has been fantastic with the bucket here. See strawberries? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And then I had that set that my daughter gave me a while ago, so that's inside the bucket. And here are the baby birds. Some of them fell out and two of them ended up in here and we left them in here. Gary had to put them back once when they fell out too young. He put them back in the nest. And then a day or so later they fell out again. So I set this up for the parents and they were going back and forth and feeding the babies. And then in a couple days they climbed along the stick. They jumped out and who knows where they are now, but they're off into the wild. So what else do we have to do? We can walk over here. And we have hummingbirds all over. So let's walk over here and see what's going on over here. Nothing here yet. Like I said, I'm changing a lot of that, but this has been fantastic. These are the tomatoes I literally pulled out and stuck in. They're doing good. I've got peas growing in here and I, let's see what else we've got. Oh my gosh, look, 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 I didn't see it. We just got a cucumber. You and me get to see our first cucumber down here. I've got cucumbers going up on this rack that Gary built out of PVC and he hung it and he hung it from the wall. He bent his rebar, you know how he bends his rebar. So I've got in here a watermelon. Still a little early for watermelon, but I want to get more plants started. So we've got the watermelon there, which has been kind of staying small because I think it's not quite warm enough where cucumbers, you can plant them earlier than watermelon. Even though cucumbers love the heat, they're growing just fine right now, as you can see. There's three of them in there, and there's two there. The one watermelon's small, but it's got a good kickstart. So once the weather literally warms up, it will take off and it can go up there too. So I'll have at least one watermelon there. And then here, it's just some squash I'm spotting in here. So we'll see, I believe it's zucchini. It should be labeled. And then there's another one here. And there's something, you know, that's a pepper growing next to it. 
I didn't notice that the other day. And then this is the other tomato plant, just kind of stuck it in there. What I want to do is I want the tomato plant to go up on that side. Same thing with that one, up on that side. And that will look really cool and keep them off the ground. And then I'll decide, I'll probably put some stuff in between, in the soil, in the ground. Nothing here, just more walking onions I stick in containers because we have all the babies all over. Fantastic onion. Fantastic onion to use the whole thing. Here's the Moringa, nothing done here. I will be getting there soon. Okay, so my daughter came over the other day and she said, your squash is not doing well, water it. Oh, it's doing fine. <laughs> Look how beautiful the new leaves are. Look it, it's even got zucchini. You think it's doing bad? If you saw what I did to it, you would say, wow. Literally took it out of the rainbow garden, I grabbed it and pulled it. I'm brutal with some of the plants. Pulled it out and brought it over here and buried it in there and watered it. I will trim back the leaves soon. I don't want to touch it because it's actually doing fantastic to me by leaving it alone. If I cut it right now, the leaves, I don't want to open up the stem where I could get insects or something in it. I don't want it to get anything in the stem. So let the leaves do their thing. I could always trim the leaves down, but I don't want to open, have an open stem because they're hollow inside. Let the plant establish its root system because I literally pulled it out and do its thing. So is it doing bad? No, it's actually doing fantastic. Then I've got, oh, I don't remember the name of it. She brought it over. She bought, or I don't know if it's the seed she bought. I mean, remove my lid made out of a tote lid. Isn't that cool? Okay, this is some sort of squash she bought. I can't remember the name of it, and I did not label it, but I will. I put them both in here because I think it's not a real big plant. I hope it's not a real big plant. And I'm going to let them grow in here, and this way, if they do trail, they can go out. If they go up, I'll trellis them. So we'll see what happens to them. And then a lot of these are regular. This one, I believe, is a gray zucchini. That's, um, that's going to be changed. That's garlic chives, but I'm going to put a tomato in there, and I'm going to trellis the tomato up. Haven't gotten to this yet. This one is a gray. See, it's labeled. I actually have that label, so I know that one's a gray. I've noticed that the gray have gray in the leaves. Look at that. And Black Beauty zucchinis, they're just green. Now, this I'm going to leave. This is garlic chives. I'm going to leave the garlic chives there. There's another gray. See, the leaves are gray, so it's going to be easy to spot those just by that. Here's another gray. See, leaves are gray, gray veined. And it's nice to have a watering can nearby so I can make sure when they're seedlings they get well watered. You don't have to go looking for it. Tomato plant. Now why is that tomato plant there? Because it's going to trellis up this bent rebar and I painted it. It's been doing quite nice. I painted it. And then here's another gray. I ended up planting too many grays in a plastic bag. They grew. I put them in a paper cup. See the paper cup in there? And they were growing really, really good. So I ended up figuring, well, let's just put the gray zucchini in here because the gray zucchini has kind of got a nutty flavor, but it's just as good as Black Beauty to do everything I want to do with it. There's last year's tomato plant, which I was going to yank out. It is doing so well that Gary had this extra rebar. He was playing around and bending rebar. And I said, if you don't need it, I'll take it. So he said, okay. So I stuck it into that tote and I stuck it into that tote. And I'm going to trellis the tomatoes up in a circle. Isn't that cool? I think that's going to be really, really cool. So I'm going to do the same thing over there. And then just go from there and see what happens. I think it's really cool. And again, you know how I build my own soil. The only thing I do is on the top, I put a few inches of potting soil. I get the cheapest potting soil because inside I've got all kinds of matter from the garden. I've, I sometimes throw wood chips in there and leaves and branches and then kitchen scraps and, and mix it with leaf, brown and green and colored leaves and tree colored and kale and tomato leaves and everything goes in there and the soil underneath is fantastic. That's why the plants grow so well because it's growing in mother nature. It's what I can do. And don't worry if you don't have it because as your garden grows, you're going to have more than you need. And don't ever, when you're trimming your plants, you're trimming off the brown leaves, yellowing leaves. That's really the only leaves I really take off, the brown leaves. I don't throw that away because that's my future soil. Okay, so now you've seen the wall. Not much new here. I'll walk over here for a second. 
that is chia seeds. So if you got chia seeds around or you go to the store, I did not know they would grow that good. But there they are, that's chia seeds. And then of course I've got my pomegranates that I planted here, I guess last year, they're starting to have flowers. And that's it, so I haven't done anything here either. I've got a lot of plans for there. Got the aloe veras that the hummingbirds keep coming to. There's a hummingbird nest up there too. More flowers, this one is really throwing a lot of flowers, this pomegranate. Did not have any last year, but this year, look at that, really cool. And I haven't done anything in the truck bed yet. Everything you see is from last year and just growing wild on its own. So it's doing quite well. I've been using quite a bit of Swiss chard. In fact, I want to make a green drink this morning. So I'll grab a whole bunch. And there's a lot of old squash that I didn't use. See what it's doing? Oh, that's a good thing. You want to see pollen? Look at it. Watch, watch. Can you see it? That's pollen. Cool. That's what all the insects take. Bumblebees come, bees come. Birds come, hummingbirds, now I got pollen all over my camera. Probably my lens too. A little. Okay, anyways, if I don't get this squash out of here, it's gonna rot right in its spot there and it's gonna grow. In fact, there's one squash coming up there. Oh, my whole camera's full of yellow pollen. So I'm gonna have to do something there soon. And then here's the trees. I'm, again, I'm not doing anything here. Here's the tote here, this is sage that was, it was growing in something else and I moved it, doing beautiful. Quickly moved it in this red tote I had on a chair, doing really good. More walking onions. And I've got nectarines on a seedling pulled out of the ground. Look at this, there's one nectarine there. There's another nectarine there. There's another nectarine there. It doesn't have too many, but you know what? There's another one there. And who knows, oh, there's another one here. This is a really good start for a baby tree that was yanked out, I guess, two years ago, right out of the ground. This is seedling. This is just strictly off of a fruit that fell on the ground. It is not grafted or anything, and I am quite happy with it. And of course, you've seen a hundred times the avocado tree that came up in the wood chips, and then my chair garden. There is nothing to say new in the chair garden yet. This will be probably not be quite the last thing I get to, but I want, I'm finished really with the wall. Just gonna set up some tomatoes there and get that going in the wall and then set up one more zucchini back there and get that all done. And then I'm gonna come in here or finish my rainbow garden. I've got too many gardens and keep in mind, I have no gardener. I have no one working for me. It is just me. Hey, but you got Gary. No, I don't have Gary. Gary may bend rebar for me and do something, but Gary's got his own garden that he spends so much time in, so he does not do anything in my garden. And you know, I kind of like it that way. I want to do it myself and have more control over how I want to grow it and let him do his thing in his garden. So I'm going to come in here and decide which plants stay. I'm probably going to save these tomatoes. How can I not? I mean, look at this. It's coming up. I haven't done anything and it's growing tomatoes. I've got still garlic chives growing. I've got a lettuce that got chewed up by probably the birds and tomato plants. I'm gonna go through all this and I do wanna take you with me so you'll see how I freshen up a tote. Look at this. Oh my, I did not expect that. Look at that, look at all the worms. This, whatever grew in last year, remember all the leaves I put in here? Remember all, look at this. I have not done this, you can see it's still hard to pull out. Oh my goodness, this is the richest soil. Let's see what's left in here. A little piece of leaf in there. Oh, there's an eggshell. There, look, 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 look. It might be an eggshell. Look at this. Oh, I'm knocking worms around everywhere. They're everywhere. What I want you to see, let me see if I can switch hands for a minute because I'm right-handed, not left-handed. So I hold the camera with my right hand. Hold on, hold on. What I'm trying to show you here, no matter what was growing in here, we've got a lot of worms. See, we got worms? I'm gonna get mud all over my hand, yeah. We got worms everywhere. Everywhere we got worms. And I really don't want to disturb them. But this soil, this is the richest thing you can have. This is all free. See how bits and pieces of some branches left? These are all worms. 
Okay, that was a, a, a seed growing, but there's worms. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is like, I really don't want to bother them that much. Oh, there's more worms here. What I'm trying to say here is if you really don't want to grow in a tote and you want to grow in the ground, you can still set up a tote. Make sure you have drain holes or your worms will die, your microbes will die. It's got to drain well and throw all your leaves in there. As you pile your leaves and your stuff from your kitchen, your you know, kitchen scraps, scraps of stuff from the garden, as you pile it in there, it's going to break down. Earthworms will come to it. Look, there's even a grub. And you think, ugh, they're awful. You know what, though? They chewed and eat everything down for you. Of course, now I can toss them out in the birds. The birds will probably find them on the top. The birds eat that, too. So do rabbits and ground squirrels and all that. But what I was saying is you could have a tote strictly set up to just throw all your stuff in that you don't know where you want to put it. Even bits and pieces of small wood from trees, you know, off of, off of a tree. It will break down and you can come back to it next year or in a matter of months and you have this soil to put in the flower pots, to put in the ground, to put in a raised bed. You could put this soil into everything or anything and you've got the richest soil. You've got your worms in there. As people say, your worm poo is in there. Everything is in there and I've done nothing but just pile. That's free soil. You could go buy any soil you want. That's the cheapest. You can buy the most expensive. You will never get anything as good as that because this is alive. If you go look at a bag of soil that you buy, potting soil, it's not soil. It's just stuff that they broke up, let break down. It's not alive. You have to make it alive by putting things in it. It's just to retain water for you and they might have put some vitamins or something in there, nutrients for plants. This is real soil. So you go around, you collect leaves that are falling off. It doesn't matter if it's tomato leaves or what. And when you pile it all in there and it breaks down and turns into that, you've got the greatest medium to grow food in or even flowers if that's all you want to do. So keep that in mind. That had plants growing in it. I think there was lettuce, celery, different things I yanked out. But the point is, there's still bits and pieces in there, so everything is still eating and working it. But it's going to end up going into other totes, going to move it around, especially new totes. Think of sourdough bread. What do they do with sourdough bread? They bring over something to put in, you know, in there so it will do its thing. Well, you take a little bit and you move it into another tote that's new. Brand new, you got leaves and you got potting soil maybe you bought, you put in there and some native soil in there, but you're gonna pull something out of a tote that's full of life and put a handful or a couple shovels into a new tote. It's like a starter. It's a, it's a real starter mix and it, your plants are absolutely gonna love it. So just keep that in mind. Anyways, I think I have talked enough and I've showed you that here's nothing with nothing but We'll, we'll get this going. And like I said, this is all stuff from last year and things that are coming up now. How am I going to yank this out? I think I told you last time I'm going to take out the tomatoes because I want to cater to the pepper. But I really don't want to take them out. Here's the thing. I've got the richest soil in the world here because of what I piled in there. And the plants just want to grow. They say, you don't want to plant us? We'll plant ourselves. So what am I going to do? Anyways, keep the little tips in mind. Even though you may not want to do it on a chair, do it in a tote, you may want a container just to make your own rich soil. And think of plant food, that's better than plant food. That is plant food. That's got everything your plants want to add to it to get you started. So with that, I think I have really talked enough. I need to get back to work so I can get my garden growing. I want to get more tomatoes growing and everything. So with all that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. Oh, cool. You're almost ready to pick, too.